Hey guys, so we're starting a new lesson today. The lesson is actually 7.3. However, before we get to 7.3, we have to review some basic concepts from lesson 3.3. So you guys probably remember a little bit about this lesson. We talked about Avogadro, how um, he created a number which represents how many moles or how many uh, atoms there are in one mole of a substance, right? And then we can use moles as a way of calculating the number of atoms and the mass and the molar mass of different samples, right? So let's just get right into it. You guys remember that when you look at the periodic table, the number on top is the atomic number. So we're not gonna be looking at that in this lesson. Please do not confuse the atomic number with the molar mass. Okay, the number at the bottom is the molar mass. This is what we are going to be using in this lesson. Okay, this is basically the mass of one mole of a substance. Okay, so one mole of carbon is equal to 12 grams. And you can find it here in your periodic table. Every single block has a number underneath. So one mole of boron is equal to 10.81 grams. One mole of nitrogen is equal to approximately 14. Oxygen is 16, right? All right, so now you guys probably also remember this triangle. This triangle allows you to calculate the number of moles depending on the molar mass and the mass of the compound, okay? So the mass goes on top. This is the mass of your sample. So if I tell you your sample has is 100 grams, that's m, small m for mass. You can see it right here. Now the moles is the actual unit that we're usually using to represent atoms right? And then the molar mass is what you find in your periodic table. So this number right here is pretty much always going to be given to you. You're never going to have to wonder about it because it's going to be right here underneath whichever substance we're talking about. So if I'm asking you um, what is the molar mass of fluorine, you'll say here 19 grams per mole, okay? Remember, units are very important in these calculations. Remember to always include your units. You will lose marks if you're not including proper units. So the units of molar mass are grams per mole. This means how many grams of this substance make up one mole of that substance, all right? And the mass is in grams and the moles is in MOL, which is just mole, okay? You have to remember that a mole is just um, a specific number of atoms that all weigh a specific amount. So one mole of carbon has 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 atoms of carbon. And the same thing applies to all moles. So one mole of oxygen also contains 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 atoms of oxygen, okay? And that is all represented right here by Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number basically tells you how many atoms are in one mole of this substance. While here, we were talking about how many grams are in one more mole of the substance, okay? So you would use this triangle to find your number of particles or the number of moles in a specific number of particles. Avogadro's number is a constant, meaning it will never change. You're always going to know what Avogadro's number is, okay? All right, so how about we try some questions here, okay? All right, so you can see that I just provided you with the block of the periodic table. However, if this was not provided for you, you just go into the periodic table find copper, which is right here, and go ahead and write it. Just remember, different periodic tables are going to give you different decimal places of numbers. So you see, for example, in the periodic table in your book, it says 15.999, while here it just says 16. 
So don't worry, your numbers might be a little bit different, but that's okay. If it makes it easier, just stick to the periodic table that I have given you. All right, so the first thing we need to do here, you need to read the question carefully. What is the mass in grams? So we're looking for mass, right? Of 3.5 moles of the element copper. So I know right here, let's go with our givens. What is given to us? I know N is equal to 3.50 moles, okay? Remember, N, this is moles. And if you ever get confused, you can just go back here to your periodic, right, sorry. If you get confused, I have provided you guys with this image, which will make things a lot easier. So you can see here that N is equal to moles, M is equal to mass, and big M or capital M is equal to molar mass. Okay? All right, so I know my number of moles, and even though it's not written in the question, I also know my molar mass, right? See this? This is molar mass. Now you're probably wondering, how can I find my molar mass? Well, it is literally right here. And if I did not provide you with this, you just go here and you find it here in copper, okay? All right, so, and big M is equal to 63.55. Five. Let's just round it up to five, five, okay? and this is in grams per mole. And we are looking for small m, because the question says we're looking for mass, right? So now let's derive an equation using this triangle right here. As you guys can see, we're looking for little m, which means that we have to multiply the molar mass by the number of moles. So small m equals two molar mass times number of moles. So let's go ahead and substitute everything into our equation. Sixty three point fifty five times three point fifty equals to approximately two hundred and twenty two grams of copper. Okay. We're gonna put this inside of a square just so that your final answer is always very clear. All right, so let's try another example. Let's try this one right here. All right, so the first thing, we gotta read the question. A chemist produces 11.9 grams of aluminum. This is not a molar mass this is your little m. That's because this is not the same number as this, so obviously this is just the mass of your substance. The mass of your substance can change because it depends on how much of it you actually have, right? So you can have 100 grams of aluminum or you can have 10. It really doesn't matter. It just depends on the situation. All right, so how many moles of aluminum are we looking for, right? So here, in my unknown, I know that I'm looking for N, okay? And I have small m, which is 11.9 grams. So I can't start the question just like this, but I also know my capital M, which is my molar mass, and I get that from right over here in the periodic table. So it's 26. 0.98, okay? I'm just gonna round it like that. And this is in grams per mole, okay? Because it's the molar mass. So now let's derive an equation for N. So here we're looking for N. To find N, we have to do M divided by large M, or mass divided by molar mass. So N equals small M over big M. So here we go, let's find it. 11.9 grams 
divided by 26.98 grams per mole. These two cancel out. So you end up with um, an answer that is just in moles, which ends up being 0 0.441 moles of your sample. All right, so do you get the idea? Small m is the mass of your sample. Large m you get from the periodic table of whatever compounds we're talking of, of whatever element we're talking about. And n is the number of moles. This basically gives you an idea of how much of the substance you have is just in a different unit. Okay, now let's try this one last question. Here we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We don't actually need the molar mass for this. So for this one, let's read the question before we get ahead of ourselves. How many moles of silver? So I'm looking for N, right? Are in this many atoms of silver. So I know the number of atoms that I have. Okay, and if you guys can see here in this, uh, in this triangle, I'll show you a clearer version right here. You can see that the number of particles or the number of atoms is the number of moles times Avogadro's number. Remember, Avogadro's number never changes. It is always the same. That's because this is the number of atoms found in one mole of a substance. And this is a constant, which means you're always going to use the same number. All right, so let's go ahead and write what we know. So I know that my number of particles, let's just say number P, this is going to change because sometimes you're looking for particles, sometimes you're looking for atoms, and sometimes you're looking for compounds or molecules. So let's just say here, number of particles equals 3.01 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. And uh, what else do I know? I know that Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. And my unknown n equals question mark, right? So from this triangle, let's see how we're going to find n. n is equal to number of particles over Avogadro's number. So n equals number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. N equals to 3.01 times 10 to the power 23 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the power 23, which ends up giving you approximately 0 0.5 moles of silver. Perfect. All right, so depending on the situation, you're gonna use different triangles. If you see atoms or particles or anything like that in the question, you need to automatically know that we're gonna use this triangle. If you see uh, mass or molar mass, as soon as you see the word mass, you know that you need to turn to this triangle. So depending on the situation, you're going to use either this one or this one, and you just have to see what are your givens, what are your unknowns, and which triangle is going to help you achieve your goal and solve the, and solve the problem. All right, so guys, now go ahead, and if you have any questions, you can rewatch the video, and if you're okay, you can go and start working on your assignment for today.